Um, we'll uh, move ahead with uh, what we have learned so far with Docker. Okay, so you guys have seen uh, the basic uh, commands like how we can uh, get the list of Docker images, how we can remove them, how we can run them. And yeah, basically we, um, we basically created, uh, um, we, 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 we created an instance or we created a container out of Docker. Now the problem arise, uh, uh, yes, we created all those things where we can find on Docker Hub. Right, so we pulled everything uh, from there, and we uh, in, then we then we run out, run on that. So uh, think a scenario where we want to run our application on a Dockerized environment. Okay, now our goal is to um, we, we assume that we are developing a simple web application using Python. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, make sure uh, we, uh, we, we can run this uh, Python uh, server anywhere that we can find, okay? So how are we gonna do that? Uh, we have several things. So for example, if you, if, you, if you want to run the Python application, first thing is that we need to make sure the machine or the instance that we're gonna be running is having the uh, is having the python version it needs okay so you guys know um uh you guys know that um, uh, there are several versions of python available like python 2.7 and python 3 those are like uh, the major versions right now what we're having so the application that we are running is, let's say, for example, need uh, Python 2.7 for some reason, okay? So in a scenario like that, uh, the machine that we are supposed to run our application should have Python 2.7. If it is having Python version 3, what will happen is there can be version incompatibilities. You can't, uh, you can't expect uh, a Python version to be running on a version that is not designed for. Okay, same goes to other applications as well. Okay, don't think it's only for Python. Say, for example, we have developed a Node.js application. The application that we have developed is, uh, it should be able to run on uh, Node.js 12, but the latest version is Node.js 20, as, as I can remember. So if, if, if you're trying to run Node.js 20 at this point, the not uh, old version will, won't run. Okay, we need to make sure the environment that we are supposed to run is according to uh, the specification of that. Okay, so rather than setting up the environments and everything for yourself, what we can do is uh, we can create our own Docker image. And we can have all the necessary softwares installed within that Docker image in order to run this application. Okay, so we don't need to um, we don't need to make sure what is the Python version or what is the Node.js version that is running on the machine. All we need is Docker installed within the machine that we are we are to we are running. Then the rest will be taken care of by the Docker image that we will be creating. Okay, so it's going to be the same thing that like what we did last time. Uh, only difference is we are not pulling an image. What we're going to do is we're going to be creating an image that containing our own, our own application. Okay, the, so our application will be dockerized. So whoever run this Docker image will be able to run the application without worrying about the versions uh, necessary libraries, conflicts, no, nothing. So you don't have to worry uh, anything, any sort of uh, complication that might arise while we are running. Okay. So let's see how we can create our own Docker image.
First thing I would like to uh, see is that uh, let's take a terminal. I'll be using the built-in uh, VS Code terminal for this, so it will be a little bit easy for me. So let me see uh, what are the images that I have, uh, Docker images. So you guys can see there are like few uh, Docker images that I have installed in, within this machine. Okay, so the Postgres, let me uh, look at the Postgres image. Okay, the Postgres image is, um, uh, Postgres image tag is 15 alpha. That means we can assume that this is uh, running Postgres 15 uh, on an Alpine image. Okay, then there is Postgres 15.4. So we can assume that this one is running Postgres 15.4. I'm, I'm not sure which is the base image. Same goes to other things like there are Mongo, where is Ubuntu. So this is like a basic Ubuntu version 16.04. So first thing first that we need to do is we need to make sure that we get a base image. Base image in the sense uh, it is the image that we're going to be build on top okay so base images are like uh, we can consider those things as like the basic operating system okay basic operating system i'm not saying that everything that uh, everything that a normal day-to-day -day operating system has but it's like a trim down version of what we're going to be based on Say, for example, we have a base image of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 16.4. So uh, this version, this is like the base image. So in order to run the base Ubuntu operating system, we can use this as the base image. Okay. So there are like very, very smaller versions of base images. As I mentioned, Alpine is one of the base images which, which we consider. Uh, are the smallest of them all okay so anyhow what we need to do is we need to take a base image based on that uh, i mean uh, by using the base image we will add our own uh, own configuration own things then we can um, uh, create our own docker image okay so let me show you guys one thing. Um, so uh, in order to create a Docker image, so what I'm gonna do is I am in a directory called uh, Docker. Okay, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, first thing that you need to do is you need to create a file specifically in this name, Docker file. Okay, D, D should be capital. Uh, and file is not having any space. If you are using VS Code, something like me, the icon might change for, you know, you guys can see the icon changes. That is indicating this is a correct Docker file. Okay. So uh, every Docker file uh, should be uh, based on uh, uh, or uh, uh, should start from somewhere okay sometimes it is enough to start from a base image okay otherwise you can based on already built images okay let's let's start with um, our own one that means we will be creating uh, a, a docker image our own docker image based on a existing base image okay we need to have a base image so we'll take the very most bare bone ones and we will create a docker image out of it okay so if i'm use if if you're using vs code you might get something like this okay no source image provide with from so this is an indication saying if you are creating your own Docker image, if you, are, if you want to create your own Docker image, you need to specify base image. Okay, you need to specify the base image. So how do we specify the base image? So in order to specify the base image, we use a command called from. Okay, we use a command called from. 
So from and another, uh, then we have a space and we have to give a base image. Okay. Uh, so you guys can see the description over here provided by Visual Studio Code. So set the base image to use in the subsequent instruction. From must be first instruct in uh, from must be the first instruction in Docker file. So that means um, whenever we are creating our own Docker image, the first thing that we need to specify is from. Okay. So from and the base image. So how do we know the base image that we want to use? So we can go, uh, um, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, go to Docker Hub and find plenty of base images. But for this demonstration, I'll be using one of the base images that I have already within my machine, which is the, uh, let me check, Docker images. So I have the Ubuntu 16.04 uh, 16, uh, 16 so I will be using this image as my base image okay of course I can use any of these other images as the base one but to keep things minimal I will use the base um, most uh, most basic images like Ubuntu 16.04 for fact, I know that this does not contain any other uh, any other programs uh, other than the basic operating system. Okay, so I will be using Ubuntu sixteen oh four. So uh, right now, what I need to do is I need to type uh, something like this. Okay, so the first uh, the first is uh, about the uh, image name, the base image name, and if I followed by a colon, uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see, um, followed by a colon, the tag version. So this is the version that I am interested in. So for example, if you need a, another version of uh, Ubuntu, not 16.04, but let's say uh, 23 or something like that, any version you can take use of okay so this is the version that i am interested in and i can uh, base my image on top of this ubuntu image so i can click and view so let me open the web browser for you guys at this moment how it looks like um New share Google Chrome. This one. Google Chrome. Give me a second. New share Google Chrome and Give me a second, uh, stop sharing. Uh, you share code. Okay, I think I'm um, showing sure something else. Give me a second. It's not showing my other window, I'm not sure why. The 
Um, okay. Um, so first thing I need to do is I need to um, look for the base image. So if I go to Docker Hub and if I search Ubuntu, I will get a lot of images. Right now, there are like a few variants. Uh, 220.04, 220.43, list goes on uh, uh, for, uh, for other tags. If you like to test these things out, okay? So there are like Nobel, this is like the name. Okay, the name that we can be using. So the focal is one of the Ubuntu versions. And if you need, you can, uh, you, this is like the code name that they have given and they have the Ubuntu tag version. So you can use Ubuntu colon 24 and 04 version if you want. Okay. So anyhow, what you have to do is find a base image. So there are other notable base images. Say, for example, um, if you go to Alpine, uh, there you go, Alpine. So Alpine has some base images which are coming uh, in these versions. Okay, if I want, I can use the Alpine version as well. So it's up to uh, you to decide what is the most suitable one for this. So if I say, for instance, I want to use Alpine, uh, Alpine for, for this, what I do need to do is uh, name the base image, something like this. So my base image for this, uh, for the custom image that I am creating is going to be Alpine 3.1.9.0. Okay. So let's use that. Um, what will happen? So if you guys can remember in my Docker images section, I did not have uh, Alpine 3.9.0. Okay, so that might be helpful. And the next thing that we need to do is, uh, is to um, install necessary software. Okay, even I can run this application and see how it goes. Okay. Uh, so I can uh, run this base image and see whether this is working. That is also fine. But if I do not need, uh, if I do not need this only the base image, maybe I need some information uh, installed uh, within this application. I can do that as well. So for example, uh, I need to... Uh, install uh, uh, another software on top of the base image. Maybe I want to install Python, maybe I install, I want to install something else. Whatever the application that I'm interested in, all I have to do is I need to give the correct command to do so, okay? Let's check first, let's, uh, let's build our custom image based on this Docker file. Okay, right now, it is nothing more than the Alpine version base image. We haven't built, uh, we haven't add anything, or we just, we haven't done any customization, just the base image, that's it. So how to build this image? Uh, that's gonna be easy, okay? So I am gonna, in, um, I am going to open uh, a terminal uh, within the same directory where the Docker file is. If I put ls command, you guys can see the Docker file in here. So the next uh, is next thing is going to be the command to build the Docker image, the, to create our own Docker image. So we'll be using Docker build Okay, then we need to tag it. Okay, then that means we, in order to identify this Docker image, we will be using what we call a tag. So this is also a tag that we have used. 
So I need to tag this image in order to identify this image from the other ones. It's like something like giving a name. Let's for uh, let's have that kind of mentality. So we will be tagging this image. So I will create, I will name this one as hram giga 0 0.0.1. Okay. So I am building a Docker image. I am tagging it as hram giga colon 0 0.0.1. That is the version that I am giving. And the next parameter I am giving in here is a simple dot. Okay, you guys can see a dot in here. Dot indicate that means okay, if you are building a Docker image with this tag, which one of that gonna be the Docker file? I will say okay, find a Docker file in here that is like the donation dot is representing. That means by default, when Docker is trying to build this image, it will find it will try to find a Docker file within the given location okay so that's why i mentioned the file name should should be matters if you're having a, a, a separate name this docker file will, would not work as expected okay the file name should be there if you want to use a separate file name uh, for some reason you don't need to um, you don't need to have it named docker file you can also change that but then again you have to point the file with minus f and you have to give the name for it okay you can say file minus f docker file if you are having a different name you have to give the different name so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit enter now uh, so i think i can give dot in here okay so since it is the docker file that i'm using i'm not going to give a file instance in here now you guys can see it is building a docker image so it is missing uh, alpine uh, when we are talking so what it's going to do it's first it's going to download the base image and it's going to it's gonna create uh, an image out of it, okay? So it's currently it is created. So I can check whether it is uh, created. Um, Docker images, and if I zoom out a little bit, you guys can see an image is created. Sorry. A Docker image is created, uh, the name that I have given, the repository, the tag, and it was created like 10 days ago. Let me explain why this is 10 days ago. Right now, you guys can see a Docker image is created. Okay. All right. Uh, so creating a Docker image uh, based on the Alpine image is, you guys can see, pretty much simple. Right. So next thing that we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna create another terminal so I can move along. So next thing that I'm gonna do is um, let me like uh, try to uh, run this Docker image. Okay. So I can say Docker Docker run h run decay colon zero point zero zero point zero one. Okay. So you guys can see it started the uh, container and it, it also, I think, uh, since we uh, haven't run it in the daemon mode, it is started and it was executed and it was stopped. So I can see docker ps minus a would give me like, yes. The state of this is um, the status is created and exited uh, as you know, very recently. Okay, so my Docker image was created. It was it was running and it was uh, deleted or it was stopped. The container was actually at least stopped. 
I can run this in daemon mode. Okay, now it is running on the daemon mode. Let's see how it goes. Docker ps. Uh, okay, I think I need to pass something else as of the last time. Minus t, I suppose. Uh, Docker run. Uh, okay, so I think um, minus T was the command. Yes, okay, minus I should be there. So you guys can see an image is running in here. Uh, the container ID is this, so I can assume that uh, the Docker container is running. Let me try to uh, go to that. Uh, exe EC minus it. I think it is uh, Bosch. No, it's not it SH. Let me check what is the shell. Alpine image shell. Okay. Uh, um, voice bin message. Okay, bin message. So I am right now inside the uh, Docker image that I have started running. So let me clear these things out so you guys can clearly see that. Okay, by the way, we have test these things out uh, in the previous uh, previous lecture. So if you guys find this uh, mesmerizing, please have a look on the uh, previous lecture, okay? So right now I am within the Docker image, the Docker container that I have created. So if I put LS, these are the, all the things that um, the, um, the image, um, the container is running. So for, for example, let me check what is the Python we have in here. So you guys can see, even uh, with these, with the image that I have created, no Python version was installed. Python is not a known command in here. That means uh, this base image does not come with Python pre-installed. Okay? That is expectable given the size of the Alpine image. It is not uh, not having any extra uh, application installed to it uh, because if we install those things, the base image would be uh, having unnecessary things. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we can find uh, we can we can see how we can install Python in Alpine. Okay, so let's see that. Alpine image install Python. Sorry. So right now you guys can see that um, like what we do, like what we installed in uh, uh, in a normal version, we need to uh, add these things to our application and how we can. Uh, do these things, okay? So, first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to set up, um, we need to find a good command that will install Python, 
Okay, so the command that I have found is this. Let me show you guys. Okay, so in order to uh, install uh, Python within this container, I can use apk at update python3 pip3. Okay, let's hit that. And you guys can see Alpine is uh, using this apk command to add uh, packages. So it's currently going to the Alpine registry, which is uh, which is like the uh, software central for Alpine. It is trying to get uh, the appropriate version, the Python version. In here, I have mentioned, okay, I need to install Python version 3. If you want Python 2.0 or something like that, you guys can install that uh, as a part of this. Okay. But remember, I am doing these things within the container itself. I am doing these things in the container itself. So what will happen when the container is terminated or when the container is no longer working? So will uh, the container is like uh, just a simple instance of the image, okay? So in, in, in within the image, I want, uh, if I spin up another, if I spin up another, uh, container out of my image that would not contain Python, okay? Because I am currently within the uh, with, within the container that I have created and I am executing these commands, okay? That means whatever I do is going to be affected only to this, uh, only to this container itself. When I delete this or when I exit this, the Python version or anything is gone, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this by simply pre uh, pressing co uh, command C or control C. So I just canceled it. My intention is not to do within the um, container itself, but any container that is running out of my image should have Python by default, okay? So how I am going to do that? I'm going to exit my container. Okay, right now I am within my container, within my machine. And I'm going to see, I have a container running. I'm going to stop it. Doc, uh, stop, and then ID. So um, the once I am done with my container, I'm going to remove it as well. So as soon as I remove everything, you guys know, uh, the image, the uh, commands that I have typed, all those things will be gone. Okay, so I'll remove the container as well. So the next problem is how we will be building an image which is Python pre-installed. Okay, my image should have Python pre-installed. Like uh, earlier, what I did was I uh, I created the image which is basically the Alpine uh, and I logged into the uh, log into the container which I run from this image and I installed Python. But this is going to be a headache if you are uh, doing this for more than uh, you, you can't uh, expect everyone to do the same thing. What we can do is we can we can uh, install Python at the build stage, okay? You guys can see that I have, uh, I have these uh, um, uh, Docker, Docker script that I can uh, run, uh, or that I can create an image. When I am creating the image, I instruct the Docker file to install Python as well. So how I'm gonna do that? So we have already selected our base image like this, okay? So the next thing that I'm gonna do after I am done with um, these uh, base image selection, I am gonna run a command. The command is the command I used to install the, um, used to install Python, okay? So what, 
the docker file is going to do first is it's taking the base image and it is running apk at python uh, as the next instruction so you guys can see uh, when i am creating the container it is already sorry when i am creating the container it's already already installed with python in it okay so i don't need to install python within the container at the build time at the um, uh, when we are creating the docker file it is already there sorry so it is like a, it is like an image which is already python installed to it okay so let's create uh, let's uh, since we have changed the docker file we need to build this again okay if i if i if i uh, if i uh, if i try to run if i try to run the uh, old image which is 0 0.0.1 0 .0 it will not work sorry about that so uh, if you guys can see in here, let me get the terminal back. Okay. So uh, within the terminal, okay, I have uh, HRD 0 0.1.0. 0. So this is like the base image. This does not contain Python. Okay. Now I'm going to create a Docker image, Docker build minus T HRD Leaker colon 0, 0.0. 0. I can create one, okay? If I create one, that would do what it do. It will override the existing image, okay? Override this existing image. So, or by overriding what will happen earlier, it was only Alpine base. Now it will also add uh, the Python command that we are supposed to run, okay? If I create uh, version two, what will happen? It will create a new image, uh, not the same one that we have seen as the 0 0.0.1, but a new image, which will include this command execution. Okay, 0 0.01 version did not have the this command, but in this version, it will execute this. So the difference between version one and version two is it's the version two will have uh, already installed Python in it. Okay. All right. Uh, let me build uh, version uh, point two and I will say use the dot here. That means it is going to build uh, on based on this location. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Next thing that we need to uh, uh, is to wait until uh, these steps are uh, wait until these steps are getting done. You guys can see whatever uh, we did on the, uh, the uh, what we did earlier in the uh, earlier in the. Uh, um, early in the application, those things are happening right now. Okay, so um, let me terminate this one. So I found a better instruction uh, for application. So let me paste that. So first thing is uh, um, uh, first thing that we did was we we have another command called env. Okay, this is something new. So env uh, is uh, another command like run from env set environmental variables. Okay, environment variables. That means within the uh, within the application itself. If somebody is asking uh, Python buffered uh, within the environment, it will be one. Okay? So this is like what we call an environment variable. 
this is something like within your terminal you are putting a global variable okay so this is an environment variable look into environment variables if you don't know what they those things are basically they are setting a value uh, which will be accessed within the existing uh, application system or in this scenario the building process of this so next thing is I have uh, modif slightly modified the run command one apk add upgrade python 3 and where it's going to be installed uh, then there is uh, if if there is not pip you will install pip and all those things in here so this is like more advanced thing okay you don't need to know about these things what these things do basically it is running this command and next it will run this command next it will run this command so all together by running these three commands what will happen uh, within the alpine image you will be you will you will have python installed okay so you take the base image uh, you have set up an environment where we are running these three python commands okay just ignore the old one this is like the recommended answer so what i'll do is i will build the docker image based on this and remember uh, one thing uh, about uh, docker image creation is um, when we are creating uh, an image when we are creating an image based of uh, these steps okay so from is one step setting up environment variable is another step uh, this is another step as as good as uh, these three commands would be three different steps okay so for some reason uh, we i have completed this one i have completed the next step you guys can see there are like all the running steps are matched in here so for some reason i have completed this step and uh, by uh, by some interruption or the internet was unstable after installing this after running this command this the next command the the command on the line six get interrupted okay it was not executed properly so in a scenario like that uh, docker is smart enough to cache these steps okay the first step is cache second one is cache third one is a cache since the, the line six was not executed it will not execute from the beginning but from the interrupted or the not executed line so this is uh, something that will uh, help us to identify the uh, identify some build patterns okay not something that we're going to be doing in this uh, scenario uh, in this course but pretty much will be useful when you are running an application uh, later on but for now just remember these layers are being cached if they are successfully executed okay so for instance after uh, it is taking a little bit of time to install this python version but uh, all these things uh, when everything is installed every command that we see here in, is uh, executed if i try to uh, build another version you will see if these things are executed uh, before they will be cached out you don't need to wait until like the python installing that happens right now you don't need to wait now you guys can see the time even around like 160 seconds so if you cache this one if you build something later on as long as you do not change anything here they will be cached for some reason let's say uh, I have changed some parameter in this line. Okay. I have changed the, some parameters in this line. So, what will happen then again? Uh, the line that I have modified will be different because when we are executing that, when we are executing something different, we can assume that this layer has changed. This is also changing and so on and so forth. 
So unless you haven't changed anything in this uh, lines for the next build, what will happen? They will use the cache in order to build the uh, upcoming images. Okay, so that is like what we are seeing within the uh, Docker build commands. Okay, so uh, give it some time uh, based on based on your requirement. You might need to install Python, or sometimes you might need to install Java, or in a scenario like this, like I am create, I am taking Alpine image. I'm adding Python and I'm adding pip. Pip is like the, um, what we call the, uh, what we call the um, a, a package manager for Python. Okay. So it is taking the base image, installing Python. Or what you can do is you can go to Docker Hub, go to official images and search for Python. So what will happen is there will be images which are already uh, already 